Hello, my name is Chris and in this video I'm hopefully going to show you how to configure a Raspberry Pi already running Flight Radar 24's provided image to update Flight Aware as well. If you haven't seen my previous video where we created the initial ADSB receiver to Flight 24, I'd recommend you go and take a look because that's the device that we'll be using for this video and there have been no config changes made to that device since the creation of that video. So before we start to look at the requirements for Flight Aware, we need to prepare our device first. Starting with Flight Aware, they state if you're already running an ADSB receiver with Dump 1090, then you can install the Pi Aware package and update Flight Aware. After conducting some research into Dump 1090, there are two different types between the operators that we're going to use. So Dump 1090 FA is from Flight Aware, and Dump 1090 Mutability is provided with Flight Radar 24. From what I have read, there is no problem using either one to update both providers. But more importantly, I couldn't find anything that states you need to update a resource file to look at a differently named Dump 1090 service. As per Flight Radar 24's Share Your ADSB Data page, it instructs you to disable MLAT and MLAT without GPS. So we're here to share our ADSB data between two system operators. To disable MLAT on your existing Flight Radar 24 Pi, there are two ways to do it. The first way is on the GUI, which you've seen back in the first video, using an HDMI connection from the Raspberry Pi. However, because my device is now installed up a pole and difficult to plug a monitor into, we're going to use the second method instead, which is SSH. Okay, so moving over to the computer, I will load up my PuTTY software, which is what I am going to use to connect to the device. Our connection type is SSH. The hostname or IP address will probably be unique to yourself, but I know that my device is 10.1.50.164. Your one will be different depending on your local network. Once you find that out, type it into there and we'll open that connection. Now, you are then presented with this login screen. Now, when you create the Flight Radar 24 image initially, it will give you default credentials. Uh, when I set my one up, I used my own credentials to connect to the device. So I will put in my own, so my login and my password. And that's us successfully logged into the device now. So we can disable MLAT using the command of sudo nano to get into the file of etc. fr24 feed.ini. And here we have MLAT is yes. Now we want to change that to no. And MLAT without GPS, we also want to change to no. Control and X to leave. Do we want to save that? Y for yes. And return. So that's it, that's MLAT disabled, and that's the initial prep done. Next, we will need to update the Raspberry Pi ready for the newest installation version of Flight Aware. So if we bring up the Flight Aware instructions, and down here it has the commands for you. We will just go through. What we'll check at the end of this process and everything as well is that it hasn't broken anything to do with our original Flight Radar 24 as well. Ooh, I've had an error. So the next thing it's uh, asking for is a reboot. Now our session here is inactive. We'll need to close it and restart. So we'll open a new session. And we've still got the Flight Radar 24 icon coming up, so that's good. So that's great that we've managed to log in and it's showing the Flight Radar banner and things like that. So it's not like broken anything that we can see offhand so far. So the next thing we're needing to do now um, is download and install the Pi Aware. This command is a little longer than I care to type, so I'm just going to copy and paste this. There we go, that uh, downloaded fairly quickly. So now if we do the sudo db kitty.
To be honest, you could probably just copy and paste that as well. I'm just doing it the hard way for hard way's sake. It's not like me, like trying to build it into the smallest box, but you know. This is saying, please run the sudo apt update to use the new configuration, which step three part B tells you to as well. So that's fine, we'll do sudo apt update. Next, we have to sudo apt install pi aware. That is the same error I got previously, which is interesting. Okay, so I've had to read through some of the errors that are coming up, and I don't think there's anything major at the moment. Um, but we'll continue with the process and see what we get. Uh, the next part, 3C, says enable automatic and manual PyAware software updates. Now, I don't like things updating automatically without me doing updates for the rest of the system. So I'll enable manual updates, but not automatic updates. Next, download and install a dump 1090-FA if you don't already have a decoder software, such as dump 1090 installed. We do because it's part of Flight Radar 24's installation, so we can skip that. 5. Download and install dump 978, which is only if you are in the US. So, sorry America, I'm not going to do this step because it's not relevant to me. And next it's telling us to reboot again. Well, it does like a good old reboot, doesn't it? And let's see if we can go restart session. There we go. So just by right clicking on the banner, there is a restart session command there as well. So instead of closing it and reopening it, we can do that. And then it keeps all your history of what you've done as well. We're back in. We've still got the Flight Radar 24 banner, which is good. And now it is telling us to claim your Pi Aware client on flightaware.com. So let's click on this and see where we go. I'm going to set up a new account with an email address. So once you type in the email address that you want to associate your account to, they will send you an email with a verification code. Be sure to read the terms of use and agree and confirm that you're 16 or older. It will ask you if you want to set up multi-factor authentication. We are in the UK. So similar to Flight Radar, you need to be on the same address range, local LAN, as your ADSB receiver. Because we set this one up with the account, it already has it here. So linked receivers with myself, I already have a site under here added on today's date. So once we clicked on that link that said claim and it brought us to this page it has already associated the device to that account so no that's great that, that saves a bit of work and now it's saying you can view your stats here so a couple of things that this one didn't ask me that the flight radar 24 one did before was my location mlat is not configured which is fine okay so we'll go full screen let's go to my adsb stats all I want to be able to do at the moment is check that we are updating locations. So from what I can see, I've seen 39 flights and I've updated 1,482 positions between those 39 flights. So that's good. You know, it's, it's working. We're updating and all that in the last 18 minutes. So before we just call it a day and say, yep, sorted, all working, I just want to check, as mentioned before, that we want the Flight Radar 24 system to still be operational as well. So let's have a look at Flight Radar 24. So I want to check my data. Uh, 
and if I, the status is currently still online, so we're still reporting to Flight Radar. But one of the other ways that I'd like to check that I'm just receiving something here is I will put a filter on for my own ADSB receiver, and I can see a smattering of aircraft around there at the moment. There's not really much around Edinburgh. I've got some tweaking to do with my antenna, which is why I don't see very many at the moment. That's fine. At least I know it's reporting on both locations. So yeah, brilliant. So that was me just running through the process that's been provided by Flight Aware to add their system into the already existing Flight Radar 24 setup. I know that there is an issue with the web browser and being able to view your stats locally. Um, it's something that I'll no doubt look into in the future at some point, but we're updating live information to both Flight Radar 24 and Flight Aware at the same time. So the system works. Instead of just investigating this later, I'm gonna do it now. So apparently one of the things that can cause this issue is by doing a in-place upgrade, which we did because we went from, um, there's another flight aware to be aware of. So I've seen a potential resolution, which I'm gonna try now. So from what I've seen, doing the upgrade, we have moved from bullseye to bookworm and the boot location is located in a different area. Well, I think I can see where the issue is because that slash boot does not have slash firmware after it, which is what it is looking for. We'll do the sudo apt upgrade again. It should start installing because that boot file actually has the right name now so it can find it. Or not. So I've went and done some research already with my little helper who's decided to take a nap at this moment in time but um, it seems like it is an issue with this particular version of Linux um, I did resolve the boot directory issue that was there uh, but it's still throwing back the same kind of errors for everything else it's just something we'll have to deal with at the moment hopefully it gets patched at some point soon so thank you for watching um, I hope this has helped with going through the process. If you have any comments or questions, please feel free to leave them below. My name's Chris, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.